This is John Yotis, aviation attorney, accomplished pilot, prolific writer, flight instructor, change agent, great father, formidable litigator, general aviation champion and pioneer, AOPA trustee, general counsel, doting grandfather, thoughtful mentor, trusted friend, chief legal officer, convention planner, engaging speaker, Piper Cub and Cessna Turbo owner, influential leader. This is John Yotis. For all of the roles that he's filled and the manner in which he's filled them, John is this year's Cecile S. Hatfield Award winner. It's my pleasure to be able to honor the recipient of the Cecile Hatfield Award for Excellence in Aviation Law this year, John Yotis. I've known John for over a quarter of a century. As a trustee, as a business associate, an international bon vivant, counsel, and friend. He ran a, one of the most successful programs we had, the AOPA Legal Services Plan for Pilots. It was a win-win. For the pilots, they had protection of a legal services attorney if they had questions, contracts, etc., and for the association, a steady stream of income. As an international bon vivant, he was the ideal person to deal with the 63 countries represented by the international AOPA. And as the international AOPA, these presidents met once or once every other year, and John was the perfect gentleman with the history and the knowledge to be able to endure himself to all of those people. Uh, he was a general counsel to the board and certainly to the association, uh, helping me lots of times with how to write a testimony just right or many of our legal contracts for the entities that we established. But most importantly, John has been a good friend. Advice on the history of the association which he had, his demeanor, all of the things he uh, helped me with, I can never repay him for. John Yotis truly deserves this prestigious award. John was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and graduated with a math degree from Brooklyn College. After graduating, then spending two years in the Air Force, he entered George Washington University's law school. Fortunately, one of his trial practice professors in law school recruited John to his Washington firm. The firm represented the Aircraft Owner and Pilots Association, and John was assigned to work almost exclusively with the association. He became intrigued with aviation and started flying himself, obtaining his private and commercial pilot certificates with instruments and multi-engine ratings, and owning aircraft ever since. This first-hand knowledge and experience informed his legal practice and earned him real-world credibility with his clients and growing public audience. John worked at the firm for five years until, in 1963, the AOPA invited him to become its exclusive legal representative and move to the association's headquarters in Bethesda, Maryland. When he became a lawyer, John Yotis operated a highly successful law firm, not solely dealing with aviation, but initially a general and business law practice, including wills, divorces, and representing companies in a variety of corporate matters. When his practice moved almost exclusively to aviation, it covered the breadth of aviation law. He represented individuals and aviation companies in matters involving fixed-based operations, airlines, governmental entities, airports, real estate, and power line construction companies, to name a few. He forged new ground in almost all of these areas and he helped professionalize the aviation legal bar by helping to grow aviation legal associations and by centralizing aviation lawyers. It was an exciting time to be in aviation and it created an environment that benefited the users and continues to benefit the users today and those of us who practice aviation law today. 
Without this kind of pioneering, foresight, commitment, advocacy, and passion, who knows what kind of system we'd be having today and whether the general aviation community would have flourished as it has done. On behalf of many, many people, and especially on behalf of my family, we thank John Yoda's dad for all you have done for us. Thank you. John established a reputation for himself as a worthy legal adversary, tough, insightful, diligent, smart, not egotistical, always the gentleman. Loretta Alkaya came to know John professionally when she served as FAA attorney and FAA regional counsel for 30 years. I am extremely fond of John Yotis, and as a young attorney at the FAA, he was the best, truly the best opposing counsel one could hope for. Longtime friends and associates of John's add their perspectives. First of all, I want to say, John, you're a very old friend from a long, long time ago when we we started the AOPA ground schools. I remember, I remember even when your when your daughter Kathy was a baby. You, Jack Herrings, and I spent a lot of time in Washington working on pilot issues. Uh, as I recall, uh, the three of us testified before con- Congress on a hearing on something important on aviation matters. Uh, and it wasn't long after that that uh, that uh, in fact it was. Uh, uh, in the summer of 1988, I think, that the AOPA three-day ground school shut down, and uh, uh, almost simultaneously with that, Jack Harrington uh, came and asked me if I would be a member of the EAA's Legal Advisory Council, which he was forming. And uh, the purpose of that was to uh, give some legal help to uh, EAA members. Well, uh, at a short time after that, Kathy and John, I think they were asked to join, and so we all got together. From that point in time forward, we all attended the uh, EAA's Air Venture each year uh, and held lectures and forums. And John Yotis and I became the very closest of friends because uh, I had a pit pass and we got together and we drove around together to the airport. And we've done that for almost over 20 some odd years. So John is not only a friend, but a just, just a, an absolute dear to me and a fellow, one of my very best friends. And uh, it's been a thrill just being a part of your life. Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Christopher Hart, member and former chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. I appreciate this opportunity to congratulate John Yotis, give him best wishes, and thank him for all that he has done. My apologies for not being there to do this in person. John, congratulations for receiving the 2018 Cecile Hatfield Award for Excellence in Aviation Law. You certainly deserve it and the aviation community has benefited greatly from what you have done for lo these many years. Speaking personally, you've been an inspiration to me for decades, almost from the time I graduated from law school and came to Washington nearly 45 years ago. I don't remember how we met, but I've always admired you for how much you have done to improve aviation safety by clarifying the complexity of aviation statutes and regulations to the benefit of all of us, and by righting wrongs in the aviation enforcement system wherever they occurred. I particularly want to thank you for your role in my becoming a member of the National Transportation Safety Board, not just once, but twice. Being on the board, and especially being chairman, has been the most exciting and gratifying part of my professional career, and for that, you get much of the credit. John, best of continued success in whatever you do next, and as a former Cessna 310 owner, I look forward to being able to fly your Cessna 320 when I grow up. Thank you. Uh, John, congratulations on this achievement. I've always enjoyed the friendship and the professional relationship that we have. I particularly think very fondly of the legislative efforts that you and I were involved in relative to opposition of the FAA Civil Penalty Demonstration Program and uh, the other effort on emergency certificate actions, the so-called Hoover Bill. I always appreciated the way you make me think on questions I pose to you. I just wanted a simple answer, and you made me think. (laughs) That's your style, and that's a good one. Again, congratulations. Now, come down to my place, and let's go tarpon fishing.
The Hoover Bill, named for the man who revolutionized aerobatic flying, was a hard-fought legal milestone and only one of John's significant contributions to general aviation law. The bill brought due process to the FAA's formerly unilateral authority to immediately ground a pilot without first giving the pilot a chance for defense. Oh, John Yotis uh, was a dear friend of Lee Bailey. And uh, Lee Bailey, of course, was very instrumental in doing everything he could to support me and defend me. And he told me that uh, he was a friend of John Yotis and uh, he wanted to get his assistance because he was very closely involved. Uh, John Yotis was a real jewel and straightforward, honest, and uh, uh, left no stone unturned when digging up evidence and information. And he provided us with a wealth of information because he was working so close with all of those people there in Washington, certainly more so than myself or, or Lee Bailey could ever have, have accomplished in any acquaintances we might have had. I didn't have any that, except the, the uh, administrator himself. Another milestone was GARA, the General Aviation Revitalization Act of 1994. This law limited product liability terms for general aviation aircraft manufacturers and revitalized what was becoming a dying general aviation industry. As the last standing active commercial pilot in the United States Senate, I want to tell you that I'm very proud of you and I'm proud that you have actually uh, been receiving this award. You know, in addition to you, I have worked with your daughter Kathy on a lot of stuff. I mean, like the Pilots' Bill of Rights 1, the Pilots' Bill of Rights 2, all these events that we have held uh, when we are together with all of our general aviation friends. Uh, we've actively uh, successfully done away with the privatization of their traffic control. All of these things we have done, they've been successful. But it's been you, John, you. Uh, you're the guy that's been around here forever. I, I'm, I'm still a lot older than you are, but I have to tell you that we've done a lot of successful things together. And general aviation is much better off as a result of you and your efforts. So. Congratulations, and I look forward to continuing to work with you and the legacy that Kathy brings to the table. Okay, congratulations. John served as president of the influential LPBA from 1984 to 1986 and as their convention chairman for decades. His knowledge and influence grew and John shared it, not only individually with clients, during national conferences of the AOPA and LPBA, but also through extensive speaking engagements. The EAA and ABA and countless other associations also sought out John's participation, and he gave it gladly. Many came to know John through his monthly Pilot magazine article, and many shared with John that his article is always the first thing they turn to in the magazine, often tearing out the articles and keeping them for future reference. Several NTSB general counsel commented that they read John Yotis's articles as a yardstick for how they are doing. Through his columns over the decades in the monthly AOPA Pilot Magazine and his innumerable appearances at AOPA and many other live events for laymen and lawyers, John Yotis has been the trusted voice making the intricacies of FAA regulatory and enforcement law and procedures understandable for several generations of general aviation pilots, operators, enthusiasts, and attorneys. No one else has approached his level and length of legal services to the general aviation community and it is most unlikely anyone ever will. Thank you, John. For your leadership and legacy in aviation law. For living your passion by owning and piloting many planes, logging over 5,000 hours, 
and still flying today. For being an extraordinary family man, father, and Top Gun grandfather. Congratulations, John. You are the 2018 Cecile S. Hatfield Award recipient for excellence in aviation law. Mm -hmm.